Hey, good evening. Welcome to WGSN DB Going Solo Network Radio. My name is Dr. Christopher Salute. You are watching The Barber Shop. I'm your host of Going Bold Radio as well as Going Bold Networks here on Wednesday. Just going to share the show on social media. You know that we like to just take a minute, share it with all of our folks so we can uh, get it going. We like to get our commenters and all that kind of fun stuff. So just give me a quick second and we'll be with you in a moment. We are going live. Um, if I could cross that out, share now. You know, I, I, I've been sharing it to some groups and uh, I don't know if people are liking that anymore. So I don't know. We'll, we'll just, we'll try to do it this way. We're also going to be posting on TikTok. We're also on Instagram, all that great stuff. So we're going to get into um, the topic in just a little bit. How's everyone doing tonight? I'm having a great, great night. AC's pumping. It's beautiful outside. Um, I've got my office is all set up. I don't know if you've been following the show, but but I've been I've been doing my show out of my living room. So all good stuff happening. Uh, so what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about toxic masculinity. So before we get into the show, uh, I always like to do a couple of quick things. Uh, tell you where I'm at in life. Uh, tell you you know what's going on. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, I always like to. Um, I've been talking about the book that you should be buying, and we finally got the book in. It's called the college admission. So feel free to buy it. Even if you're not going to college, if you're not, if you're not an early career person, you know, try to, try to get it for a friend, get it for, for, uh, you know, somebody's kid or whatever. And what I'm doing on social media too, is if you send me a copy of your receipt that you bought the book, I'll go ahead and send you a signed copy as well. So you can give your copy to someone else. Right. Or you can just tell me you bought, show me that you bought it and I'll donate a copy to a local school in your name. So that's what's going on with me. Job's doing really well. Teaching's doing really well. Bold and Fabby Plus kind of on a little hiatus. We're posting a little bit here and there, but just so much going on, right? Um, before we start our show, you know what I, I like to do? I like to just do a quick moment of silence or prayer. I will be praying. You do not have to pray. A uh, moment of silence for you is fine, but put some positive energy out in the world before we get into the show. And the show tonight is going to be avoiding toxic masculinity. So we want to really put some, let's put some positive energy out there before we talk about toxic masculinity. So let's take a quick break. Um, you know, show somebody that you love them, send some positive vibes out there, and we'll be with you in a second. So we're going to make the, the, those a little bit shorter because I feel like I lose people during the, uh, the moment of silence or prayer. Um, and that's not my intent. My intent is just to throw the positive vibes out there. So I'll go ahead and pray a little bit longer uh, later, later throughout the, the evening. So, so we're talking about avoiding toxic masculinity. Uh, Task, uh, the, avoiding toxic masculinity tonight. And I always start my show with a couple of different things, right? So we're we're going to start, dear Shervia, listen closely and learn something about toxic masculinity. Interesting. Um, so I always start my show with a couple of movies, three movies that kind of, uh, you know, exuberate uh, the point and, and encapsulate, you know, uh, whatever the topic is. So uh, toxic masculinity, the three movies that I chose today, you're going to be shocked, right? Uh, John Tucker Must Die, the easy one, right? Uh, just one of the guys, which is an old '80s movies, and then uh, the movie Grease. So I actually got you '70s, '80s, and then '90s, 2000. So we'll start with we'll start with the most you know the simplest one, the easiest one. John Tucker must die. John Tucker must die is about a guy who's basically got it all, um, and these three women decide to just take him down. Uh, and, you know, hit him with all these terrible things that, you know, whatever. And he is. He's a chauvinist. He's a player. He's definitely got some toxic masculinity to him. But there's one scene in the movie specifically in John Tucker Must Die. And tell me if you remember this one. By the way, feel free to comment. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Hit me up. Um, but there's one scene where he starts to really fall for Kate, the girl that he's dating. And they're like, you going to bang this girl? Like, you going to sleep with her? Like, whatever. And he tries to in the best way possible, let his friends know, hey, you know, this is not what I'm interested in with this girl. I'm trying to really get to know this woman. And he says, you know, you don't just pop open a 1975 Bordeaux. And the response, because it's a locker room, right? The response is, oh, uncorker then porker. And they start dancing and shouting and all these things, uncorker and porker. And John Tucker can't help but be a chauvinist and a pig and jump on the, the, the bench and start, you know, waving the towel a little bit. And so perfect, 
perfect example of toxic masculinity. I mean, he tried so hard to not show that side of himself, and he and he made the first stance, right? Like, hey, we're not going to talk about this girl that way. And then, unfortunately, he gets taken down by toxic masculinity, right? The second movie that I want to talk about is Just One of the Guys. Now, if you have not seen Just One of the Guys, it is one of the best 80s movies ever. And it's really hard to find. In fact, right after the show, I'm going to Google it and see if I can watch it again. I mean, I might have seen this movie a hundred times. It's about a young woman who writes a journal article, uh, a journal piece, uh, a, new, a, news, a newspaper article, and it doesn't get published. And she thinks to herself, well, I wonder if I were a guy, if this would get published. So she, it's, it's not only, not only is it, um, you know, very, very forward thinking, but, but she starts dressing in, in a trans manner. Right. And it's a really awesome movie because she starts noticing differences in how she's treated when she's a man. Now, there's a different version of that movie called uh, She's the Man with Amanda Bynes, which is also a, 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 an okay movie. It's a good movie, but I prefer the original. Now, um, in Just One of the Guys, you notice a lot of ta- toxic masculinity, right? People talking about women. And and she, or he, as he you know, he, he names himself Terry, I think, I think it was Terry... In both, I think it was it was an androgynous name. It was Terry in, in both scenarios, but he notices as he's hanging out with with the girls or with the guys that they've got to be. I'll use they. They've got to be, you know, say things that they normally wouldn't say. Like, oh man, you know, just like being a guy and like blah blah. And it's it's like super toxic that that they do this, right? It's a really really great movie. If you haven't seen just one of the guys, definitely watch it. The last movie I'm gonna I'm gonna pull. You're gonna you're. If you haven't thought of this before, I'm going to open your eyes to it, okay? So there, there's the scene. First of all, Greece, Greece has a lot of toxic masculinity moments, right? Where Danny Zuko's like, oh, you know, I'm not really paying attention. You know, we had a good time over the summer, but I'm not really hanging out with, you know, John Travolta being real chauvinist. But let me explain. There's one part in Greece that if you didn't notice this, pay attention to it next time, okay? And and, and actually, college humor made a, a kind of a funny satire about it, but kind of wasn't that I mean it was funny but kind of like made you think they're singing that song summer loving had me a blast and all of a sudden Kaniki goes um did she put up a fight and and nobody stops and says Kaniki what do you what do you mean by that put up a, why why would she put up a fight bro so so college humor does a video on this a couple of years ago and 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 he goes did she put up a fight and all the guys are like bro is there something you need to tell us and like he escalates like did she call the police and they're like maybe you need to see someone Kaniki, if 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 you're thinking women are putting up a fight you know but that's a perfect example of not only toxic mas- masculinity but toxic masculinity that we actually overlooked so i mean i was a kid when i saw greece for the first time because i was not even born when it came out or yeah, it came out in the 70s, right? I wasn't even born when it came out. And I'm watching this movie going, okay, that did she put up a fight? I don't even know what that means, right? But ha- when you think about did she put up a fight, you're like, that's a that's terrible. Why, why on earth would you have to ask that question, right? So there's three kind of movies that, that really talk about toxic masculinity. The wild card that I just couldn't help but, but throw in here, um, Jordan Belfort, right? Wolf of Wall Street, very chauvinistic, very, you know, sex at the office, sex with escorts, and they, they, they degrade women and all these other things. And when they're in, you know, when they're in a room with all the guys, all the things that come out of their mouths, very toxic masculinity. But you see that a lot. That you know, if, if you're an investment banker or if you're in if you're in stock or if you're in sales in general, it tends to be made up of highly competitive, you know, like almost athletic driven kind of men. And and, and real I mean, realistically, we're we're making some strides and women are starting to get into into those fields, but they are male dominated. And they they unfortunately, and I, this is not me, I'm not I hope that that it, this is not the way, but they will probably be male dominated dominated for another 20 years. I mean, I know women who have been in investment banking, in stock brokerage rooms, in sales rooms, and they they take on very masculine features and they kind of just have resigned themselves to the fact that they're gonna eat some crap for being a woman in that in that profession. And it really sucks, you know? But Wolf of Wall Street is is a perfect example of toxic masculinity at its finest, right? So those are kind of the the, the three movies that I would use to illustrate toxic masculinity. So let's jump into to what toxic masculinity is, which we probably should have done before we uh, you know, before we got into this this conversation. But let's see. Um, toxic masculinity, and I'm, I'm reading from my screen. I'm sorry about that. 
if you haven't, if, if you're on Instagram, if you're on TikTok, let me show you. I have like two huge computer screens behind me, which is which is what I'm seeing. Um, so toxic masculinity, a set of attitudes and ways of behaving stereotypically associated with or expected of men regarding as having a negative impact on men and on society as a whole. The destructive, me- used in a sentence, the destructive messages associated with toxic masculinity can lead to men feeling entitled to engage in violence against women. Now that is going to be without a doubt the, um, you know, with, without a doubt, you know, the, 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 the worst of the worst, right? Mandy says, I come to learn, but I stay for the impressions. Thank you. I think, I think my impressions are funny at best, right? Even if they're not, if they're not quality, right? But, but this is what toxic masculinity is, right? And it's a social science term. Um, it's often used to describe negative. There's really nothing positive about masculinity, about toxic masculinity. Now, masculinity, we want to separate from toxic masculinity. And masculinity, I brought up as well, um, is very different than toxic masculinity, right? It's um, just, hold on, whoops, if, if I, I got to the wrong screen, my apologies. Um, here we go. So masculinity, right, having qualities or appearance traditionally associated with men, um, you know, those types of things, right? But what what we have to think about, and, and when we think about masculinity, there's a lot of traits that, that are masculine versus feminine. I, br- I brought that up as well. Ma- um, where did I put that? Masculine... There we go. There we go. Um, so it's on my Google Doc. So masculine uh, energy versus feminine energy, right? So let's define that for a second. So masculine energy is characterized by doing and achieving and is molded by logic and reason. Feminine's more intuitive, oriented towards receiving and allowing, and characterized by being. So so what I, I tend to think about masculine versus feminine, when I think about those types of energies, the first thing that comes to mind, guys, sorry if I if, if you disagree, but come at me and we could talk about it. I think about growth versus fixed mindset. Folks who have masculine energy are very achievement oriented, right? And they're logical in, in the way that they do things, right? Um, whereas feminine uh, orientation typically are, they, it's existing, it's 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 allowing, it's, it's being, it's intuitive, right? It's it's gut. And what I find so interesting about those two energies, and, and by the way, while we're talking about this energy, you can be a woman with a crap ton of masculine energy. You could be a man with a crap ton of feminine energy, right? And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gender bending. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're LGBTQ. It just means that you have that energy. One thing that that I really, really coach on with my guys when I coach, I, I try to coach men more often than women, but my following is more women. So I tend to coach more women. But when I coach my men, one of the things that we really talk about is getting in touch with your feminine side because and your feminine traits, because there's a lot of intuitiveness that comes from feminine from 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 femininism or f- femininity, and the other part of it is too. There's a lot of listening. There's a lot of flexibility. A lot of mold. A lot of energy that's that's much more fluid than masculine, which seems to be more rigid. You will find too, as men, that when you use your feminine side or get in touch with your feminine side a little bit more, it doesn't mean what you think it means, right? It doesn't mean watching the Notebook and crying over some popcorn, which I have and will do on a Thursday. Okay. My whole, look, if you watch Titanic with me and you don't cry at the end, you're done. We're done. We're not going to work. But your feminine energy is also uh, assurance. It's intuition. It's making sure that, that the people around you feel safe, not safe in the way that a, a territorial person might, might, make you feel but but safe emotionally right um making sure that people are taking care of it's a nurturing right and you know it's so funny because a lot of folks will come to me and they'll say you know you seem like a dominant you seem like a dom right a dominant man what you probably don't realize about a lot of dominant men is that they do have a very strong nurturing side because that is part of that relationship. If, if you do have that dynamic with your partner if you are into that dom sub kind of relationship people think it's all get me a beer Bro, I've never said that to any of my partners ever, okay? What I will do is, you know, try to make sure that I have figured out what their needs are before they have to tell me, right? And I do that through experience, and I nurture that. And, you know, a a dom kisses on the forehead before they kiss on the lips, right? That is a feminine activity without a, without a doubt, a thousand percent, right? So these are the things that we want to think about. But but I digress. Now, we've, we've defined... Masculinity. We've defined femininity. We've defined toxic masculinity, right? And we want to think about all the different ways that this goes. And I'll answer Pamela in a little bit. So what I want to also talk about are the ways in which 
uh, and the atmospheres in which we we tend to see toxic masculinity. Okay, but before I do that, I hate to do this to you, TikTok. It's been about 15 minutes. Let me explain to you, by the way, why I tease you for 10 or 15 minutes on TikTok and on Instagram. It's not because I love going live. I mean, I do, right? I really want you to subscribe to our YouTube channels. So when you log off TikTok and you and you want to hear more of the show, which I hope that I've said something that has gotten your attention, right? Go over to my Instagram account. You'll see on my, you don't even have to follow me on Instagram. I, I'm not looking for the follow. Go over to my story. Find the YouTube ch channel that, that I post on my story about toxic masculinity. Click on it. You can watch the show there. And then you can subscribe and then you can be part of the show. So that's what I'm hoping happens. So TikTok, got to let you go. Hopefully you can come see my show on, on Instagram. We'll see you in a little bit. And we'll log on to Instagram as well. So we're talking about, as we log on to Instagram, right? We're talking about places in which you would normally see toxic masculinity. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's really not what you where, what you would, would normally see, right? Or what you'd normally think. There are a lot of places in which um, you would think you'd see toxic masculinity more often, that you're not going to see it. And there are a lot of places where you would think toxic masculinity is not a thing, right? And and it, it tends to be. So I'm going to start with the most obvious, right? The show is called The Barbershop. You see my signs in the back, right? Thanks to Elizabeth, Elizabeth for getting those signs. I finally found them in my box. I've, I have some other stuff I have to find in my office that I have to move around, but I found those. I figured I'd put them up for the show. The first place you'd think that would be a, a toxic masculine space, the barbershop. Let me tell you how non-toxic the barbershop is. And, and now, most men that I know of, just so that we're on the same page, most men that I know of do have one barbershop that barbershop they go to for their whole life. Now, I was was a bit of a mover, right? I was a vagabond, just kind of moved around all of New York, and then I moved to, to Vegas, then I found my barbershop here. I have been to several barbershops, okay? And I will tell you that all barbershops are the same, okay? There is no way that you're going to find a toxic masculine atmosphere in a barbershop. In fact, quite the opposite. The barbershop where we are existing as men tends to be one of the most open and vulnerable places that we can spend time in. The barbershop, that's why I named my show The Barbershop. When you're in a barbershop, you are actually, without a doubt, in a very vulnerable place. You talk about things at the barbershop that you wouldn't normally talk about, and it's really great. There's very little toxicity. You'd think at a barbershop, we're all like watching pornography, right? Um, I mean, we may watch sports. I'm not even a sports guy, but I'll watch some sports at the barbershop. But you really talk, you catch up with like the amount of conversations you've had about your kids, your wife, your family all these different things, right? You have all these great conversations at the barbershop. And, and let me explain to you why. Let me explain to you why the barbershop is such a non-toxic place. Because the barbershop is generationless. You could be seven. You could be 75. You're going to the barbershop. Well, maybe at 75, you're not going to the barbershop. You might be just shaving your head. I hope I'm still going to the barbershop at 75. But when you're 75 or seven, you're going to the barbershop. And when you're going to the barbershop and you're seven years old or you're 75, you don't want to hear that toxic crap. So when you're 20 and 30, you're going to be respectful of the kids. You're going to be respectful of, of the, the older generation. You're not going to say nasty chauvinist stuff, right? And you're not going to feed toxic masculinity. I've learned more things from men at the barbershop than I've learned in class, okay? And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a doctorate, so I've, I've, I've learned some stuff. Right. So there's there's one place that you don't see toxic masculinity. Now, for everyone that I'm going to show you that you don't see toxic masculinity, I'm going to surprise you with some with something else. OK, the country club. OK, you would think you go to a country club and you would think it's very uh, high end and a lot of integrity and wealthy folks. And, you know, these very, very, you know, interesting kind of folks who 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 are who are uh, powerful, powerful folks. Toxic masculinity runs rampant in the country club. There are certain rooms in most country clubs, because I've been to them, there are certain rooms women are not allowed in. Still, in 2022, there are certain rooms that women are not allowed in in the country club. You'll see men pointing to servers and waitresses. The golf locker room is like crazy with, with regard to chauvinism. It is a high fuel, and, and let me tell you why. Because it's wealthy of the wealthy. It's typically mo most of the time at a country club, and it doesn't matter. I'm not picking on one country club. Most of the time at a country club, only men can join. Their spouses 
can be like country club adjacent members, right? That is a very toxic place. So you'd think, oh, you're going to the country club, you're going to wear your sweater and you're going to be all fancy and all these things. No, 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 no. That is typically not the place that you want to be if you're trying to avoid toxic masculinity, right? So there's one versus the other. Now I'll show you another place that I found that you don't see toxic masculinity. Now I did not have uh, the privilege. I, I, I specifically didn't join a fraternity um, when I was going to uh, college because I specifically didn't want to like join that kind of atmosphere. Just you know, fraternities got a bad rap. So as an adult, I joined some fraternities and some 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 men's types of membership things. I also joined some business fraternities, some psychology fraternities, but I did join some men's groups. You would think that these men's groups, right, would have this like, oh, toxic masculinity. Let me tell you, the men's groups that I've joined are typically out to make better men. And so you're going to find, again, a very similar energy to that barbershop because you cross generations. You have all this great, you know, all these great folks, typically successful men, um, but because they're not all successful wealthy men. You're not going to have a, the same type of person, right? You'll see more diversity and you'll find, you'll see that a lot of men really try to make you out to be a better man. And what, what that means is they're avoiding toxic masculinity. Now they may talk about, you know, politics in a negative way or something like that, but they, they, you're not going to see a lot of chauvinism. Also, because a lot of folks who join these, who join these, these groups, they tend to be married. And so married men, for now, because I think the face of relationships and marriage is changing. But for now, married men have a much better understanding of what it takes to keep a relationship flowing, to respect women, to understand what women bring to their relationship to the table, to life. And so they tend to not, you know, to, to not to not be toxic. Now, I, again, with every one that I'm going to show you, right, positive and negative, I'm going to then show you like where toxic masculinity runs rampant. And before I do, let me just make sure that I, I do the comments real quick. Oh, there's a ton of comments that I'll have to, I'll have to figure out. Hold on. So we'll, we'll go to those in a second, but um, where toxic ma masculinity runs rampant. So you would think that um, social media would be a place where you, you don't see a lot of toxic masculinity, right? Because it's public forums and, you know, you, you, you want to be careful about what you say. When men link up with other men on social media, you will see so much toxic masculinity. It is crazy. The amount of, I mean, I'm, fr I'm friends with a lot of men on social media, okay? I, well, not as much as I'm friends with women, let's be honest. But I, I, try, to, I try to really build up my network of men. And I will tell you this. Men will send you like if you've ever seen that movie, um, I Love You Man, and 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 his buddy sends him like this por this porno in the middle of work. That is what's that is what being friends with men on on social media is like. If you're a man, they just send you stuff. They just send you the stuff. These toxic kind of chauvinist kind of ideas, you know. And and when I tell you, I'm friends with a lot of liberal men, a lot of you know even feminist men. And and they do they 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 share they share some toxic stuff, so the point of that conversation is you know avoiding toxic masculinity doesn't necessarily mean avoiding the places where you think it's going to run rampant because where you think it actually is may not be the case right. CC, are we taking a break uh, before we head to the next topic? Because I just want to make sure. I, probably right. With, with that, I'll, I'll grab a drink of water and then we'll hit some comments. Yes. Okay, great. So with that, I have to let you go on Instagram. But look, if you're following live on Instagram, dude, just go check, go on my story, click on YouTube. You're good to go. We're going to take a quick break. We're talking about avoiding toxic masculinity. This is WGSNDB, Going Solo Network Radio. I'm the host of The Barbershop, Dr. Christopher Salute, hanging out with me, having a great time. Now, when we get back from the break, we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about what the experts say about toxic masculinity, 10 ways to avoid toxic masculinity. We're also going to talk a bit about masculinity and femininity and how we um, can uh, use it for dating. And also what we're going to learn is... I love the I love this particular article. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a couple of points from it. What toxic men can learn from masculine women. Even even at this point, women are doing masculinity better than men are, right? You are, right? So we're gonna come back from the break. This is the barber shop. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Salute. We'll see you in a second.
CC, we're going for the break. And we're back. Welcome to WGSN DB Going Solo Network Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Salute. We are at the barbershop. We are talking about toxic masculinity and how to avoid it. Uh, at all costs, we're trying to make sure that we avoid toxic masculinity. Now, we had some comments I want to start with, if that's okay, CC. You don't even have to pull them up. I can I can pull them right uh, from, from the comments here. You've seen them already. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pamela says, I have a young son and I think about this all the time. How can I teach my son to be a good person but also not follow in toxic masculinity? It just seems so prominent. So let's discuss that and then we'll hit up Shariva's comments as well. Um, you know, I think I think that as we're starting to see, uh, you know, single moms specifically, single parents in general, we're starting to see our world really embrace femininity as, as a strength and not a weakness. We're starting to see hopefully a little bit more of equality of, of women starting to really, you know, not only be feminine, but be strong feminists and also tell other folks this is who we are and we're here to stay. I'd like to think that our children are going to start to to to, to amplify and 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 to to display those types of those types of behaviors. Here here's here's what you want to be aware of though. Masculinity is not bad, right? There's nothing wrong with masculinity. Now now don't confuse me for one of those podcasts. Just like let me tell you something about evolution. Being a man means you got to take what you no look. That's not what we're doing. Okay, we're not talking about stupid alpha you know, uh, uh, whatever. Um, why can't I think of the word? You know, it's so funny. Sometimes I just, um, certain, certain words, I just like, don't, you know, they, they, they just, they evade me. But, but, um, when we're talking about these like alpha archetypes. Don't be a fool, right? Um, those people are idiots, right? They're, they're quoting pop psychology and they're actually jerks, but, but masculinity in and of itself is not a terrible thing. Masculine traits, right? There's a lot of strength there. It is the way we've labeled things and we can go either way on this, right? But masculine traits tend to be a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more cut, a little bit more neat, a little bit more logical, right? That's a masculine trait, right? And for, for the moment, right, you'll see that men tend to, to, to display those, to exonerate, to, 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 you know, exuberate that, right? feminine energy or or what we typically associate with women is going to be a little bit more fluid a little a little more intuitive driven now people will 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 uh say oh well um that's that's uh emotionally driven i want to i want to it's very hard for me to to get behind that because i i really don't want to to get into this whole emotion this emotional energy as as a negative right because that's but, but intuition is emotion, right? Gut is emotion, right? So I found this great website, um, voicesofyouth.org, and they talk about finding the balance of masculine and feminine energy, right? So masculine energy is going to be projective, active, expansive, pushing forward, outward, right? Um, confident, clear, capable, assertive, right? Um, that's your natural masculine. And feminine energy is going to be receptive, passive, um, intuitive, inward, right? A natural feminine uh, energy is going to be still, but has some flow to it, radiant, right? They're going to surrender to what happens. They're going to feel, be creative, right? All these things. Now, there's 
two things you need to be aware of. The wounded masculine and the wounded feminine. Now, a wounded masculine is om- is as close as toxic uh, to toxic masculine as you're going to get, right? They're, you know, they use abusive power, dominance, aggression, control, competitiveness, um, unsupportive, unstable, up and down, right? Versus a wounded feminine, which I guess is, is toxic femininity even a thing? I, I probably should have researched that before we did the show, but they're needy, codependent, oversensitive, manipulative, weak, withholding victims, right? These are the, the traits that we want to avoid, wounded on, on both sides, right? And, and, and neither of those are, are, are good things. Now, here's the thing. You can, you can be a toxic man and have a lot of these wounded feminine traits. I mean, how many folks do you talk about with regard to neediness, manipulation? That's definitely a feminine, a wounded feminine trait. I, I could tell you, I can think of one guy specifically, this dude is one of the most he has so much feminine energy; it's unbelievable. But it 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 displays itself in in a wounded feminine. It's so bad. And you all know that you've seen these wounded masculine, right? Abusing a power, do, dominant, not not dominant in the way that we talk about in a good way, right? Dominating the conversation, dominating the room, um, in a, in a way that's 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 terrible, right? That that is as close to as toxic masculinity as we're gonna get, right? Now, I know that Cece had brought this up in the last show, too, which I think is interesting. Um, you know, women who are who are um, displaying a, a more masculine side, it tends to she was saying it tends to hurt them in, in the dating scene. And I don't know. I don't know. I have tried to do a little bit of research in between shows. I think what she's referring to is this more like wounded masculine. Right. This very toxic masculine where it's, you know, super competitive, super whatever. Now, on the one side of that conversation, you have to really think about. Um, part of that is chauvinism that we as men don't like to see strong women. But the other part of it is, is there is that kind of wounded masculine that, 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 that displays itself. Right. And how it displays itself is very important because it could display itself as wounded, as, as unsafe, as unsettling, as imbalanced. And, and that's going to be a, a, a degradation to you, whether you're a man or a woman, the difference is we're more used to seeing it in men. And so men get away with it, right? Oh, well, he had a bad day. Uh, it's abuse. I mean, still could be abusive, right? Whereas women, we go, oh, she's a you know a real B word when we see that, right? We don't give that, we don't cut them that slack, right? So you want to be aware of those things. We're going to jump into these two articles, but I want to hit up this last uh, this last comment from Shariva. The barbershop I used to bring my kids to was so special. The men there were so protective and kind to my little ones and myself. That's what you see. It's su- you know, it's super. Um, it, it's really a. a, a, a an interesting trait. You know where else you tend to see it? Um, a lot of veterans groups. Now, in the field of battle, toxic masculinity runs rampant, right? Because you're raw, animalistic, all these things. And I'm not, I'm not uh, giving them, giving them credit, right? But I'm not saying that's a good thing. But you see a lot of veterans groups because you know a lot of them have gone to the counseling that they need to go to. Now, some of them haven't, right? But you see a lot of veterans who are really nurturing and 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 you know really caring, and and, and it's good to know. But yes, I mean a lot. I think it comes from generations too. You start to see men as they get a little bit older realize that they don't need to puff their chest out and peacock, right? They've been there, right? W- what they'd rather do is show their more nurturing side. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, I had a conversation with my father, uh, and he continues to say it over the past couple of months. I went through, through some struggles with, with buying this home, and I said, oh, I'm going to really stick to them. I'm going to go after these people. And my dad's like, or you don't, or you just let it rest. You know, and and coming from my dad, I mean, I get my temper from my father, and so I'm like, "You okay, Dad?" You know, as he's getting older, he's realizing when you live through so much stuff, right? It's not a big deal anymore. What's more important is family, is is molding the next generation. I mean, that, that's why that's why older men are wiser, right? They've they've experienced it. It's the same. It's the time paradox that we talk about all the time, right? Or at least that I talk about. When you're five years old, every day is the longest day of your life. Right. And every little mistake you make is 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 so amplified. Right. Because you've only made so many mistakes in your life when you're 50 when you're 75 or you're 85. You've made thousands of mistakes. You, you probably made a million mistakes in your life. Every day is just another day. It feels like a minute because you've lived so many days. And so older men do have a bit more of that feminine energy that is uh, you know, a little bit more nurturing, a little bit more intuitive. You know, they start, I, you know, talk about creativeness. I mean, I, I like to think that I'm in touch with my feminine side very often, but 
I met a man, one of my favorite men. I, unfortunately, he, he passed a couple of years ago, and, and I was really sad when this happened. But um, I had a beach house in New York. So so the two places I kind of went back and forth, I had a beach house uh, on, kind of on the shore of Long Island, and then I had my apartment uh, just, just a little bit north in the city. So those were my, my two places. And, um, and then I had a, a, a spot up north as well. Um, but uh, I moved back to my beach house for a little bit and because I was renting it. And I move and I move and this guy next to me, I mean, this dude was like big muscle. He looked like Popeye. He really, he looked like Popeye. Muscly guy in his 70s. Uh, he was a fisher, a fisherman. Can we say fisherman or do we have to say fisher person? I, and I, I don't mean that condescending, right? I can say fisherman, right? Because he was a man. Fisherman. Uh, and he also, he did a lot. He worked in like the unions for a while. And, uh, you know, just cool guy. But, but a masculine guy, for sure. Had a lot of masculine energy. So um, one time I see him and I go, Jimmy, what's going on, man? What are you up to? And, and he's, he's making, I swear to God, he's making these little dioramas in his backyard. He finds these little seagulls and, um, these little, these little, um, the uh, lifesavers that you'd throw out like little tiny ones. And he finds fishing nets from the beach and he finds beach wood, little pieces of beach wood and, and, and rope. And he makes these dioramas and he sells these dioramas at yard sales and at, and at street fairs and he sells them to little stores you have to understand that this guy was like muscle fisherman. You know, he used to bring fish to my house all the time. He'd gut it with the knife and stuff. And this dude's making little dioramas with little seagulls. And, and, and it got me thinking that was one of the first times I'd seen a guy who could really balance the two. And, and you know what it came from? In my opinion, this guy was like, you know what? I'm 70 years old. I don't give a crap what you think about me. I'm going to make my dioramas because I enjoy them. Now the key is to get to that point as a man before you, you turn 70 because we have creative energy in us. We have these things in us that we want to let out, right? We have to, we have these things in our life that we want to make sure that we, that, that we are nurturing, but we're afraid as men, we're afraid to let those, those vulnerabilities out. Right. And, and I think what's important to note is that we have nothing to fear because all, so many men, I would say all men have a bit of feminine in them. Right. But it's letting that feminine side out that I think is so important. One of my favorite people, another one of my favorite people in all the world, a uh, good friend of mine about my age, uh, you know, he, I'm not going to use his name. Uh, we, it was funny. Our, my wife and his girlfriend were, were really tight as well. We went, we went to school together for years. My wife and his girlfriend were, were really good friends. And I remember my wife came home one day and she said, oh, could you believe so-and-so left so-and-so? And I was like, oh, man, uh, you know, that sucks. I'm, I'm so sad for them. They broke up. And I, like three months later, my wife leaves me. And I'm like, I'm so sad. You knew this was coming. You were probably planning this. So so she leaves me, right? And it's fine. We're, you know, we, we remained friends. It was all good. And so me and this guy, you know, we used to get together a lot with, with our wife and girlfriend. And so we were like, well, shoot. What do we do? Let's get let's hang out. So we start hanging out every weekend. I go to his place, he comes to my place. And um, I mean, this dude, uh, college athlete, you know, smart dude, logical dude. I mean, quiet, si you know, silent, strong type, as masculine as masculine gets. And uh, we're having a cigar in my yard. And uh, and I, we might have been drinking, so this might, might have been, you know, one of, the, one of the things. And uh, he 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 takes a puff of his cigar and he goes, Hey, man. You ever cry? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, be still my heart. Yes, of course. And But to hear it from this man, right? And I said, yeah, of course I cry, man. And he goes, <laughs> it was like a movie. He goes, I've cried before. <laughs> and, and he tells me, I'm not going to, now I'm not going to share the story, A, because then you'll know who this person is. And B, um, it's his story. It was, it was his story to share. And it was a very intimate moment between he and, he and myself. And he shares, and he shares a story about one of the big times that he cries and he cried in his life. And I, I learned so much about um, about this man in, in that moment that it, it really it was touching. It touched my heart. Um, and and I think that that is one of the ways in which we can avoid toxic masculinity is, is by getting in touch with our feminine side. Now I want to make sure that I, I pay homage to this to this website. Um, what toxic men can learn from masculine women? This I mean basically says the same thing. This is from theguardian.com. Uh, masculinity to put simple um you know it, it's appropriate for men but it it, it, it seems like um what's the word it, it's not expected from women right yet and, and so um th th there's there's this great balance that a lot of masculine women have where they're in touch with both sides but they do masculinity right for a lot of reasons 
one, because I'll say this, they haven't been exposed to toxic masculinity and conditioned the way we have. But two is they have the ability to to be their, their themselves. They're already breaking gender norms, right? So they're going to catch crap anyway. I'm sure, you know, if, if, if you're a masculine one, whether you're trans or uh, you're LG, somewhere on the LGBTQ, uh, QIA plus spectrum somewhere else, you, you're already breaking those norms. So you've already caught crap. So you have the ability, I would hope, then to form your masculinity in a way that that is is your way, right? Versus men, and I'm, believe me, I'm, I'm not out here to say that men have it easier than, than masculine women, but men have been conditioned over the years to, to, to have that toxic masculinity. So it's a little bit more challenging for us to do that. But um, you know, they, they tend to, um, to be able to, to kind of balance the masculine, you know, and, and the feminine. And there's a lot of great, I, I'll put it, I don't know if I could put it in the, the thing, but there's a lot of great, um, you know, scholarly stuff that talks about, um, that talks about this. And one of the things that it says is they have more of a chance to think very carefully about what kinds of masculine people they want to become because they are deliberately ch- not, I don't want to say choosing masculinity because it's, it's innate in them, but they're deliberately, you know, bringing out the masculine parts of them. So a really good article by the guardian. And I think the guardian is an LGBTQ publication if I'm not, or is it just a regular, it could just be a regular article, a news website of the year. I don't know. Um, and then the last article that I want to, I want to bring in is an article. It's called um, the book of man.com. Um, uh, you know, not terrible. Uh, talking about, you know, the 10 ways in which we can end toxic masculinity. And th- this kind of goes to show d- d- about that kind of, of avoiding of toxic masculinity, right? So so the first thing that you want to do is speak out, right? And, and and that's something that that a lot of men just don't do. For me, it's, it's definitely challenging. You know, one thing I'll, I'll note, um, as a man who prefers, and you know this about me, but I date plus size women, right? Well, that comes with its challenges, right? You know, you're in the locker room or you're at the strip club. Let, let me tell you, the last time I was at a strip club, I couldn't even tell you, right? But you're in, a, you're in an environment where where men are looking at beautiful women for whatever reason, because men look at beautiful women. That's just what they do. And everyone's got everyone's got a type, but they'll all agree that like so-and-so is pretty hot, right? Quote, unquote, hot. I don't agree. I could see that you see this woman as beautiful. I, I, I see that. The same way I could see that a Ferrari is a beautiful car, but I'm more of a Lamborghini guy, right? Um, and so, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys were like, Hey, hey check that out. Check that out. And I go, I'll, I'll be out. I go, that does nothing for me. I'm, I hope she's a sweet person. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so, so I'm used to kind of that, that speaking out. So, so when it comes to toxic masculinity and chauvinism, I will be someone who's like, guys, we don't need to say that. You know what I mean? The other part of it is, you know, getting made fun of because you like plus size women is, is part of it too. So, um, you know, that, that kind of thing is, is, to me, uh, you know, I'll just be like, bro, cut, you know, for me, my, my, my partner's a supermodel. So can you say that about the people you like? No, not really. You know? So, um, number two, kill the work in excess, no excuses culture. So, so this is kind of that toxic positivity, keep working kind of thing. And I'll say of all my masculine traits, this is probably the one that I fall victim to the most. I am a workaholic and you'd think I'd be a millionaire. I just, I'm addicted to my work. So, you know, kill that kind of no excuses culture. I'm in sales. So I, I do tend to make a no excuses kind of attitude for my team, but you know, there, there comes a point where you have to also say, Hey, find that balance. Right. Um, this to Pamela's point, don't teach boys that they shouldn't express their emotions. So, you know, w- one of the things that kills me is, is, and I hear this all the time, not just in media, but in real life, I hear women say, oh, you know, Johnny hit me in the playground. Well, that means he likes you. We have to stop that rhetoric, stop that rhetoric that men can do what they want and be interpreted in the way, in whatever way they're going to be interpreted. They need, when they, the, when they want to say something, they should say it, right? We as men need to say it, right? Call out the trolls on Twitter. We talked about that. Pay attention to the entertainment boys are consuming. That's super important too, right? So, 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 just like the the Greece example, right? Point that out. That that Greece is probably not that part of Greece is probably not something that you want to be focused on, right? Um, the, I'm going to skip this one. Uh, boycott toxic leakers. Uh, be open with other men. Do nice gestures. Um, and realize that not only is it a revolution, but it, it's going to happen in every day. I want I want to really focus on number eight, which is be open with other men. The, the point the point that we need to to do to make when we're when we're avoiding toxic masculinity is to communicate with other men because if we're not communicating we're in silos and when we're in silos and we're not intertwining and we're not we're not vibing with other men we're gonna think that we're wrong the reality is is that nothing's wrong as long as you're being genuine and true and kind so if you're expressing to men I will say this 
some of, like I said, some of the most masculine men that I have been hanging out with, I've had some of the most intimate, uh, you know, kind of connections with where we've really gotten in touch with a bit of feminine side and a bit of that, you know, anti-toxic masculinity. Somebody's got to move first. Somebody's got to say to the to the other man in the room, hey, I, 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 I want to talk about this, right? And when that happens, I promise you, men, you are going to feel that much better. And then, you know, if you want to have a little fun and make a stupid joke and 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 throw two percent of chauvinism in there, because unfortunately it's just a part of male bonding, hey, you know, I'm not gonna be the one to tell you no. If you want to throw some toxic sports, you know, where we're all cheering for sports, do it. You know, there's some masculine things that you can do. You wanna make a, a silly joke, you wanna go Google girls at the strip club, do it, right? Make sure that you're being genuine in in, in the way that you treat people, though. And I think that you're going to be okay. So what did we learn tonight? I think we learned tonight that, that, that to avoid toxic masculinity truly is to be more in touch with your feminine side. And that, in my opinion, I'm just clicking out of my, my, my links here. That, in my opinion, is being more fluid, being more creative, being more open to these conversations, making sure that you are, um, you know, being in touch with all those different parts of you. And with that, it's 746 my time, which means it's almost 11 o'clock on the East Coast. I want to thank you so much for watching The Barbershop. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Salute. You are watching Going Solo Network. This is the Going Bold Wednesday. This is WGSN-DB, Going Solo Radio. Dr. Christopher Salute, uh, life coach, relationship coach, and blah, 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 all that fun stuff. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with us. I know this was a topic that wasn't probably on your radar, but I think it's something that we need to, to really focus on to make sure that we're all living our best lives. So have a great night. Uh, make sure that you're putting some positive energy out in the world, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks when we come back to WGSN-DB, Going Solo Network Radio. Have a good night. That's the show. Cut.